guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale with, as promised, Juicy J back on the channel sharing his Splash Yard deck. I have a lot of questions to follow up. It's been a few months, Juicy J. How you doing, man? Doing great, Ash. Good. Uh, so you're still using Splash Yard? Obviously. Uh, yeah. Uh, ever since Three Musket Heal, it kind of, I feel like it kind of took a dip mm -hmm. because of a lot of P.E.K.K.A. around. And yes. Yeah, it's doing a lot better now than okay. it used to. Have you made any changes since the last time we saw Splash Yard on the channel? To the deck? Um, yeah, just goblins instead of skeletons, because skeletons aren't as good anymore. Okay, so we're really going to be sharing like three versions of the deck. Uh, this is the version that I've been playing right now, where it has Mega Minion and Ice Spirit in it. Uh, but we're also going to share one version with goblins and one version with E-Wiz, correct? Yes. So what versions of the deck would you recommend for what game modes? Well, on ladder, some people don't have really high level EWAs, and then you do Mega Minion instead. And then you okay. put uh, Ice Spirit instead of Goblins to reset, like, Battle Rams and stuff. Okay, okay. So this is so it's really only two versions. Yeah, the, it really is. Okay, two. the version of the Ewiz and the Goblins for folks who have high level Ewiz or don't have Ewiz at all, you go to the this version with the Ice Spirit instead of Goblins and the uh, Mega what am I using? Mega, Mega Minion, there we go. Mega Minion instead of Ewiz. So I actually love both versions. I just went uh, 10 in 3, uh, and I'm not really a graveyard player in a grand challenge with this version of the deck. I'm going to share one of my replays, and you picked out a few things I could have done differently here. I shared them at the top, and we're going to play a live match with you. But before we do any of that, let's hop into the first replay here, and let me just catch up with you, man. So how have things been going in life? You still playing a lot of Royale? How do you feel about the current meta? Tell me about it, man. Yeah, Royale is great. Um, my favorite deck by far is the uh, P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam that Colton won the uh, Gamergy tournament with. Oh, so it surpassed Splash Yard in your head, in your mind? Yeah, because it really has no hard counter. You can't counter that deck very well. So you feel like Splash Yard, that would be like the, the weakest deck against Splash Yard as well? Or Splash, that's the strongest deck against Splash Yard? Well, against Splash Yard, Three Musket Heal by far is the worst matchup ever. Okay, so how do you handle a Three Musket Heal situation? Obviously, you you know it's a tough matchup going in. What do you? That's your most difficult matchup. How are you playing things to even give yourself a shot? Well, if I know I'm playing Three Musket Heal, I don't want to poison the pump. I want to poison Three Muskets, make them heal them, and then play the bowler to counter them because. If you poison the pump and they play three muskets, the bowler can't counter it if they heal it. Yeah, that's 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 a good strategy. I mean, as good as any, because that is a very difficult matchup when you have poison as really mm -hmm. your only big, uh, you know, damage spell on the deck. Uh, okay, so I think that basically covers all the cards. There's really no substitution. We already talked about the Ewiz, uh, and you can't substitute Graveyard in a <laughs> to have a Splash Yard deck. So talk to us about the, just a, a quick refresher course about how you're playing this deck. It's not necessarily a super aggressive Graveyard deck, like a Graveyard Cycle deck. So talk to us a little bit about the philosophy of the deck in general. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely nothing like the, uh, cycle graveyard deck because you really just want to play a lot of defense and wait for your opportunity to go on a graveyard push after like defense and then you counter push or if you know they're really low on elixir okay so with all the bridge spam decks going around are you if they let, let me how do you handle those matchups whether it's the three musketeer bridge spam or just the the you know the standard vietnam deck i know we have a replay which will be good to show uh, against the the Vietnam deck, but you know, are you playing kind of an aggressive uh, graveyard at times, or, or are you still waiting to defend first? You do have a lot of counters in this deck too, Bandit and and uh, Battle Ram. Yeah, absolutely. You never want to go aggressive, no matter what deck you're playing against. Okay. Except maybe uh, Lava Hound and Golem, you might want to do something aggressive against those. But um, against Bridge Spam, Bowler's so good, it can counter Bandit and a Battle Ram just by itself. 
Yeah, I ran into a few bridge spams as well. I mean, they're everywhere, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't have any problem with them, to be honest with you. Because like you said, you have so many answers. You have a knight in, uh, in tornado if you need to, like in a pinch. But of course, you have the, uh, the bowler, which is absolutely uh, brilliant against uh, bridge spam. So you, you do have a lot of answers. So, okay, how about in when you get to double elixir time? Are you making any more aggressive plays there? Or is it still the same fundamental philosophy where you're defending first, pushing with the graveyard second? I really think it's all the same. Okay. Unless you know that they're low on elixir or the counter push, you don't really play graveyard. Talk about first plays of the game. Are you? What's your ideal first plays? Ideal first plays are cycle goblins or nine in the back but you normally want to see what they do first okay yeah, would you ever play a bowler in the back definitely not because you can get punished by a uh, bow ram bandit especially if you don't have e-wiz for the bow ram and using mega mini instead okay let's talk about uh i'm gonna put on i'm gonna go right to the vietnam deck because i just mentioned that so do you want to watch that one together all right sure yeah sweet so do you feel like this is... I'm going to pause at the beginning, by the way. Uh, do you still feel like this is the strongest graveyard deck, in your opinion, in the meta? Or is there another one that you like better? Well, there was that uh, new Splash Yard graveyard deck with uh, the Executioner instead of Bowler. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not as good because Executioner can't counter uh, Balram and Bandit by itself. So this is much better. Okay, so yeah, this is your definitely... Because you were really excited when you messaged me about it. You were like, Splash Yard is back, baby! <laughs> uh, okay, so are you ready with this replay? Yeah, I'm at 2.59. Me too. Three, two, one, play. Okay, so just talk about... Just talk us through your, uh, your thought process in this match. How do you feel about the starting hand? Uh, I don't really like this starting hand. I don't have anything slow or expendable to play at the beginning. So mm -hmm. I really just want to see what he does first. Okay. He plays goblins in the back, so I'm kind of stuck here. I don't really want to play E-Wiz because it's a good counter against everything. I just play Bowler because it's slow, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you got to like him dropping the Night Witch in the same lane as a Bowler. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad, except those bats will yeah. take that out. So I poison it to uh, negate the bats and also Electro Wizard to stun the Inferno Tower. I didn't really have enough elixir, so instead of overreacting with like a tornado, I just play a knight to counter the barbarians. Mhm. Mm so you take a little bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. Now you know what deck he's playing. Yeah, and I also take damage on the left. I'm letting him split his damage. Okay. Now, do you find that uh, now that you know he's playing the Vietnam deck, are you? What's your mentality for the rest of the match? You know all the cards in his hands. Well, I know I want to save Electro Wizard for Inferno Dragon. I want to save Bowler for Battle Ram, and I want to play Goblins or Knight to counter Bandit. Okay, so at this point, you must feel pretty good about the match, because you know everything he has. You have a, you have a solid counter for every single thing that he could throw at you. All you have to do is pr play the correct defense that you just outlined, and then hit with hit on the counter attack, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, the reason I played Graveyard there is because I didn't really have anything else to play, and I knew that... I knew that he would counter with poison, so I didn't overreact with my poison. Okay, so good call, yeah. I'm just testing it out a little bit. And that's something I noticed myself doing a little bit in this deck, is maybe playing the poison a little bit too aggressively, especially in the first uh, two minutes. Are you only using poison with your graveyard if they're giving you something to use the poison against? For example, obviously, Skeleton Army or, or Goblin Gang? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to use the poison on a knight or anything. Yeah. But on a Night Witch, of course. That yeah, works exactly. Great. Yeah, yeah. So any t this is kind of a random question, but I want to start asking my guests a little bit, you know, uh, questions not definitely pertaining to the deck as well. Uh, just general questions, I guess. And one of those is, is, are you the type of player that you keep a really, a really accurate count on your opponent's cycle in their elixir? Or are, do you just kind of have like a sixth sense for it? Like, what is your mentality? Where, what is your brain thinking of mid-match? I'm always thinking about what cards does he have, what counters do he have to my graveyard, but when it comes to elixir counting, I kind of just try and feel it out instead of actually like counting the elixir. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. So you kind of just get like, you know, and, and it works for you there. And and I don't know what it is about this deck too, but like you mentioned it a, a minute ago, but for some reason I notice that opponents sometimes tend to split their damage a lot against this splash yard, more than I'm used to playing like three musketeers or something. I wonder why that is, Do you, or maybe it was just anecdotal. Yeah, I don't think there's a certain reason, but if yeah. you can make them split their damage, that's just like a free elixir for you. Sure. Uh, okay, let's go to the Vega Punk, uh, which is a max account, a ladder account. And, and this is the version without the E-Wiz as well. So let's watch this one, okay? All right. And I'll pause at the beginning. When you're ready, let me know. All right, I'm at 255. All right. I'll catch up to you in three, two, one, go. So you're going against this deck, which is actually, I find it pretty difficult. Uh, well, I haven't faced it with Splash Yard yet, but how, what do you think of the deck you're going against? It's the minor uh, giant deck with like a lot of kind of baity type uh, swarm units. Yeah, it's double minions. So you definitely want to use Poison on the minion horde and Baby Dragon or your Mega Minion to uh, counter the uh, regular minions. Okay. So once you see right off the bat the miner and the, the the goblin gang and the giant, you must basically know the deck already, right? Yeah, I know what he's running. Or do you find that going against decks like what is the besides three musketeers heal? What would you say is the toughest other matchup for this deck, and how do you handle it? Um. Or do you feel pretty confident about pretty much everything else? I feel pretty confident. I guess that. Lava Loon could be hard, and, like, anything Minion Horde Heal is also hard, like, Valoram Minion Horde Heal Cycle. Mm hmm because you just don't have that direct damage, that immediate direct damage spell. Yeah, like a Fireball or anything. Yeah. If you run into a lot of that stuff, would you ever considering adding, like, a Fireball or something? I mean, it doesn't really synergize well with Graveyard, or are you just happy to, to keep Poison and, and just do your best in those matchups? Um, I thought about it a little bit recently. I actually saw someone using Splash Guard with Fireball. But so maybe experiment and see how you do. Yeah. Yeah. So here, you take a little bit of damage early on. How do you feel about this match, going like going into double elixir time? Well, I know that I have the counters. I just need to play correctly. Um, I think I might play Graveyard here because I'm up in elixir. Yep. And I can poison his minions. Yeah, and that was a good predictive uh, poison, obviously, knowing that he had minions in hand. And that's what we're talking about, like, knowing... It, that's why I, I imagine you're focusing so strongly early on at really just identifying what his best counters are. So once you do identify what their best counters are for whatever you're playing in your deck, whatever your win condition is, uh, are do you feel pretty confident predicting a poison or whatever the deck you're playing, predicting that spell? If you're playing like a hog deck, a hog cycle deck, do you feel confident always, always sending in the fireball, always sending in the poison if you know they have that counter in hand? Or do you like to kind of switch it up and keep them guessing? Well, I like to wait to see um, their counters or like to see if they'll play a counter that's poison or fireball or both. But look at this deck. Every single counter to graveyard he has is poison. Yeah, yes. Okay, so it's really circumstantial. Yeah. All right, and you so, but that's actually an important point. So normally, if they, let's say they have Valkyrie and uh, Goblin Gang are their top two counters to your graveyard, and you know they, they have both of those cards in hand, so you're just going to wait to see what they do first. You're yeah. not going to play the predictive. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right, I do want to watch your, your 12th win here. You went 12-0, and 0, right? Mm-hmm. Of course you did. You're Juicy J. Uh, <laughs> So, but we're gonna we're gonna watch that twelfth win. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and mix things up a little bit and watch some B minus gameplay. And uh, ah, I just had a issue with. Okay, good. Okay, sorry, had a little recording issue there. Okay, so we're gonna watch some B minus gameplay, and I want you to tell me everything I did wrong here in one of these matches. Cool. All right. All right. We'll do the eighth win because you said there was a lot I did wrong there. So I'm gonna watch and press pause at the beginning. Let me know when you're there. Yeah, I'm ready. Three, two, one, play. All right. So I don't know it yet, but I'm going against a, a Graveyard Night Witch Cycle deck. Have you seen this one before? No, this is definitely weird. <laughs> yeah, it, it is weird. It caught me a little bit off guard, and I didn't do too well, but I, I was able to sneak out the victory in the end. But kind of as I was playing, I was like, I'm going to show Juicy this one because I feel like I could have done quite a few things better. 
Yeah, so right at the beginning there, you played Bowler. Uh, I think you had Mega Minion in hand. I would have just done Mega Minion on the side of the uh, Princess. Okay. And then you did pretty good defense there. Yeah, I didn't love having to use the defensive poison, but I knew I was going to take a lot of damage, if not. You probably could have played Knight in the middle of the Graveyard area, and then Mega Minion to kill the uh, Ice Golem, I think it was. Yep. So, put, yeah, put Mega Minion on the tank, Knight on Graveyard, not vice versa. Mm-hmm. Because Knight's definitely a solid counter to Graveyard. Yep. So that poison was an accident, I've, I think. I think I, like, accidentally... I had it hovered and then I accidentally uh, <laughs> let go. But either way, it wasn't the end of the world, but I found out, I found out that he has a lot of counters to, uh, <laughs> to Graveyard in his deck. Yeah. So here, just defending. Yeah, you're doing fine here. Baby Dragon's great against Night Witch. Yeah. Um, I would have played Mega Minion to take out... Actually, no, you're fine. Yeah, Baby Dragon's going to stay alive. But the Bowler was definitely overcommitment on defense. Okay. The reason I played Bowler is because I had kind of, I was kind of endeavoring to get a nice uh, graveyard push, but it really ended up like, like I said, a real rough start to this match. And then I overcommit with a poison. So like, yeah, mistakes all the way around, right? Yeah, and you overcommit on offense there. Yeah, your grave, your uh, Bowler didn't have any health to tank anymore. Yeah, it's a miracle that I actually came back. <laughs> yeah. How do you, these princesses are really annoying. Uh, do you just basically try to get them in poison when you, where you can? Yeah, princesses are definitely annoying. You don't have a log or any like hard counter to them. Yeah. Uh, you, Mega Minions, uh, even trade. There you really should have played your poison defensively on the graveyard. Okay. Because po your best counters to graveyard are probably like Baby Dragon, Knight, and Poison. Okay. Just out of curiosity, do you think any of the four new cards are going to fit into Splash Yard? I know it's kind of <laughs> kind of a curveball question, but you know, we have the Flying Machine, the Skeleton Barrel, the Mega Knight, and the Cannon Cart. I don't really see any of those fitting into this deck, but Yeah. Do you I think any know. any would provide like a really big issue for Splash Yard players? Well, Flying Machine's like a Dark Goblin, right? Yeah, it's like a Flying Dark Goblin. Yeah, I feel like that could uh, definitely be a really nice counter to Graveyard. Yeah. Just like the Dark Goblin is. Like, you play your Dark Goblin behind your Graveyard, or behind your King Tower in defense mm -hmm. of a Graveyard. You can't poison it. It's really a hard counter to it, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so back to the match here. Uh, things are picking up a little bit, looking a little bit better now. Unfortunately, I didn't have Poison in cycle to take care of that Night Witch, so just going to have to defend here. Yeah, that was a great. It was textbook. You defended and then and then counter pushed. Uh, I don't know about that. Why did I? Yeah, why did I tornado there? <laughs> Sometimes when you watch replays, like you notice some really embarrassing stuff that you don't even realize you did, and that was one of them. Yeah. Right now, you All could right. tornado, killing the Night Witch, her bats, and bringing the uh, princess on the range on your side of the, so the tower could hit it. If you know see I mean. that? See that graveyard placement that he did against me? Do you think that's too risky? That is way too risky, in my opinion. All right, and in mine, on the other side, that's probably a little bit too little risky, right? Like I should yeah, put one more square the other one way. One more to the right. Yeah, normally I do. I don't know. There, I must have just. Panicked or something, but it, it actually worked out barely squeaking out the win there. So you think I, I was pr probably too? I picked the wrong defensive counter at times, and I also uh, probably too overcommitted on offense. Maybe with placing, I think one graveyard when I didn't need one, and yeah. one uh, poison when I didn't need one. Yeah. So it sounds like I just need to be more patient. Yeah, definitely. This deck's definitely a patient kind of deck. Okay. Ah, not for me. Not for me, Juicy. <laughs> All right, let's watch your uh, let's watch your twelfth win here against Three Musketeer, and then we'll hop into a live and call it an episode. Okay. All right. All right. Pause at the beginning. Let me know when you're with me. Yeah, ready. Three, two, one, play. Are you? Did you? Uh, are you planning on competing in uh, CCGS in the fall season? Still not old enough. <laughs> oh man, are you that young? I had no idea. 15 years old. You're 15? Old. Oh, man. Bummer. When yeah. do you turn 16? April. 
April. Oh, boy. Well, next fall season, I guess. Or, or actually, next spring season, I think you'll qualify. Mm-hmm. Have you been playing other, any other big tournaments? I know that you obviously, the, re, the way you really made a name for yourself was uh, finishing second in the, the Reddit 10K tournament. 100K. 100K, my bad. But, uh, <laughs> uh, RPL, I'm doing RPL with Ray's Esports right now. Nice. And then Plex Chat stuff. I actually won Knights of the Round Table. Oh, Full sweet. Front, yeah, that, that's Full frontage. frontage's event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you liking the uh, the Plex Chat events? We have seven right now, so we're, we're keep, we're keep uh, creating them. They're really awesome. We have Tag, Full Frontage, Woody, Colton. Uh, we're going to have Gen Drago starting soon. We're going to have uh, Backstab X starting soon. And we have A Plays Games, too. So a lot of, a lot of people. Do you, have, you, have you played in all of them? or? No, I really just heard about most of them the other day. Oh, cool. Actually, the first day I heard of Full Frontage is the day I won. Oh, nice. Well, you're, you're good then. You're one and one for winning, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, I haven't, I've been blabbing about all these Plex Chat events and stuff like that. I haven't even got a chance to talk about the actual uh, match here. So, three Musketeers, you're obviously poisoning, poisoning the two Musketeers after the split. What other keys should we be, uh, you know, uh, interested in, in this matchup? Well, he he pumped, and that's when I took his tower. Mm -hmm. So I got pretty lucky, to be honest, there. And uh, I used the goblins to keep the musketeers in the poison longer. And I'm also not poisoning his pumps anymore because it's double elixir, and I want to make sure his musketeers die. Okay. That's good. That's a good uh, piece of advice there. And since he doesn't have heal, he's using bridge spam instead. I can use the bowler on the other lane, just wipe out everything. Yeah. How about, like, obviously you did it in this matchup, but we talked about not being too aggressive in the previous uh, matchups. What about when somebody pumps as the first move in the game, and you're sitting there with, like, Knight Graveyard in hand? Would you hit them with a Knight Graveyard? Yeah, or... definitely go okay. for it. All right. What about a bowler Graveyard? What if you don't have Knight in hand? Bowler Graveyard is kind of iffy i do baby dragon graveyard but okay four graveyards pushing it okay so nine elixir basically mm -hmm. all right and you almost pick up another tower at the end so very well played for your 12th win there yeah i barely took any damage there yeah that was and that's the beauty of this deck is like it's the strongest defensive graveyard deck by far you know yeah, uh want to play a live match do you want to play on the on the max account or on juicy j um, up to you. I can play Max. Yeah, let's Max. go Max, man. All right, let's do it. All right, heading in. Cool. Let me know when you're in. 40 seconds, it says. Oh, gosh. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm playing Chief Pat. You're playing Chief Pat? Yes. Oh, God. I'm reloading because, of course, the, uh, the stupid thing is glitched, but I'll be in in a second. Dude, this is hilarious. Chief Pat showed me losing to him live, so I'll definitely show this if you, uh, if, uh, on his channel, I should say. Hopefully pull out the win here. Yeah. So he's playing bridge spam against you. Uh-oh. It's the three musketeer bridge spam, I think. I'm gonna shut up and let you play well. Alright. <laughs> I really hope that bandit... Oh, good. Woo! Oh, he's playing Vietnam deck. Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Hopefully he's doing a video right now. Hopefully, man. It'll be a little impromptu collab. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going to overcommit with the baby dragon defending Good that. Good job. I'm just going to reset with the baby dragon in the back. So you're still staying with the fundamentals at this point. Staying with the defense, defense. Wait for him to commit a lot. Defend. Ooh, he, will, Ooh. he played that really well there. I played the graveyard because I was a uh, head in elixir, but he blocked my baby dragon, so. Yep. I still got a little damage, though, and hopefully he'll play. Okay, battle am on that side. And knight here. So good stop to the battle rim, and, and good job so far. I'm hoping I can take out that inferno dragon before my mega minion takes any. Ah, dang it. A little bit. Would you have went graveyard there if it didn't take enough damage or no? Well, I didn't have him in cycle, but okay. he would have to respond to the mega minion if mm -hmm. 
it stayed if it had enough health. All right. I just I'm gonna reset with the baby dragon again. We're like even on elixir here. Yep, both sitting on a full tank. You can just see though. I mean, I just, I just gotta play really good defense. I had yeah. to play bowler there because I didn't have knight. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna poison this and knight. Perfect. And tornado. I don't want any. Yep. Hits like that. And you can see how strong defensively this deck is. You haven't done a lot of damage, but you've taken almost nothing. I think now's the time. Now's the time? If he plays Night Witch, I'll poison. He defended the best. Oh, Leaking Elixir. Oh, that's really good, though. Yep. I don't know about that poison. He got a bit of value, though. Yep. You'll take down this Inferno Dragon. This could be a good counter push here. Yep, definitely. Gonna yeah, poison? I see the Night Witch, definitely poison. Sweet. Hopefully the Bandit will get in there. I'm rooting so hard against Chief Pat. Good thing he's not playing Rocket, man. Go Mega Minion. Oh yeah, two, two. Oh, oh close. I'm rooting so hard against Chief Pat because he took me down, Juicy J, on the very first YouTuber tournament. Yeah. I came in second place to Chief Pat and he BM'd me by putting a uh, Inferno Tower on my side of the map. I'll never forget that, Chief Pat. Well, I think he's losing today. I hope so. I'm just joking. I love Chief Pat. He's like one of my best, <laughs> one of my best YouTuber friends. But very well played. You avenged me, Juicy J. <laughs> Good job. We couldn't have planned that any better, right? <laughs> yep. Hey, you just played Chief Pat on CWA. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel pretty awesome to be. Good job, man. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tag him in the uh, in the Twitter post for this one. We'll see if he watches and gives a little insight on his end. But uh, before we let you go, that was a lot of fun. Before we let you go, do you have any shout outs uh, besides Chief Pat? Huge shout out to Chief Pat, obviously. Uh, I'm sure all my subscribers are already subscribed to Chief Pat. He's amazing. But any other shout outs? I, I know you mentioned a few guys that you've been kind of uh, working with lately. Yeah, shout out to Hunter. I wouldn't be here without him. Uh, shout out to Raze Esports. They're definitely growing as a really, really awesome competitive clan, and they're really nice, too. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, also, everybody I've met from there have been, has been fantastic, too. Also, shout out to Apoc. The, uh, he's a Raze Esports streamer. He's has a YouTube channel, about 3,000 subscribers, so... Sweet. Let's give him a boost, huh? Yeah, let's let's give him a nice little boost. Well, I'll put that in the uh, I'll put that as the pinned comment in this uh, on this video. So let's let's give him a little uh, CWA love, guys. Uh, Juicy, thanks so much for coming on, man. Anything? Any last final words from you? Um, nothing really. Just thanks for having me on. No problem, man. Always a pleasure. And we'll see you in a year and a half or so when you can compete in these big uh, live events. I'm looking forward to that for sure. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, a special thanks again to Juicy J. Sorry for the little vid video issue we had earlier. I'm not sure what happened there, but it was only a few seconds. But I apologize anyway, guys. Huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. You can find his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.